So the scripture reading that I want to take you to is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. So I want to focus on one verse, really, for, for the message, but uh, I'm going to be referring to others. Matthew 16, verse 24. When you found it, you can say amen. Amen. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. May the Lord bless the word read in your hearing. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most kind and loving Father, I submit this word to you once again that you will take control, that you will touch hearts and minds, that it may transform and accomplish that which you purpose. These things I pray in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen. So, so the subject really is following after the manner of Christ. And the title of the message is called The Challenge of the Cross. The Challenge of the Cross and following after the manner of Christ. Following after the manner of Christ. And so I want to give some context to the challenge of the cross. And I, I'm going to read some other scriptures just to give some background. And, and then I'm going to focus on this one verse. So I'm going to start with verse 13 and, and read through to about 23. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I am? Who do they say that the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or, or, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee but my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, and shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. This is the conference. Christ asked, asked his disciples, who do they think he is? And then he begins to let them know the power of the kingdom and what is going to happen to him. All the things that he must suffer. And then he says later on to his disciples to follow him. Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him just deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. See, if we will follow Christ for the rest of our lives, we will see the Son of Man coming in all of his glory. This is the exchange. You follow me with 
all of your heart, soul, and mind for, for the rest of your life. This is what you will get at the end. You will witness my coming. You'll be part of my kingdom. See, God is looking for real disciples, real disciples. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man. And, and this is the thing. When he says, if any man. In, in the Greek, it refers to whosoever will. Meaning that it's not limited to those who are just in his immediate presence, but all those who will hear his voice. To every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, whosoever will, if any man, if any nation, if any person of any creed is willing to come to me, to hear my call, then you will be my disciple. You will be my disciple. You will be the one who is willing to come to me and to learn of me and to, to be taught of me. Jesus declares his expectation that his followers will indeed follow him. If you claim to be a follower of Christ, then you follow Christ. You follow after him. So this is the call that he makes to every person, man, woman, and child, if any man, if any person, wherever you find yourself, you will be willing to be taught of Jesus Christ. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See, real disciples are teachable. They are willing to learn from the hand of the master craftsman. Learning how to do the trade. Learning how to witness, how to reach souls for the master. How to become fishes of men. But this is really what Christ is calling his disciples to be, to become fishers of men. If we will follow Christ the rest of our lives, then we will see him coming in all of his glory. But God wants real followers, real followers, will come after me, will come after me. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me. You see the word spoken to the disciple uh, uh, of Jesus, to those who genuinely want to follow him. This is the word that he's speaking. He's speaking to those who genuinely want to follow him. For the word says, uh, you know, there are those who have a form of godliness, but deny the power of God. And so then they are not truly following after Christ. But this is what he's seeking. He's seeking true followers. He's seeking real followers. Those who will say, when they say, yes, I will follow you, they mean that they're going to follow him. And this is, this is the challenge for you and I today. Am I a true follower? Or am I simply following the fashion? You know, am I just going through the motions? Real followers don't just pay lip service, but turn up. They turn up when they're needed and they go out when they are needed. They go out for the master seeking to save the lost. God is looking for real followers. And if we will follow Christ for the rest of our lives, we will. We will see him in all of his glory. And when he comes, when he comes with the clouds, when he comes with all of the angels, we will see him in all of his glory. But God is seeking real conversion. Real conversion. He wants you to be truly converted. And he says, 
let him deny himself. Deny himself. You can't truly deny yourself unless you are converted, unless you are convicted that you need to do this. You know, there are thousands of diets going around. Which one would you follow? You know, you got to follow the one that you're convicted. Oh, this one really works. You know, this one really works. That's why I'm following this. And I can show you the results. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. See, it's bad enough that uh, uh, the disciples heard that Jesus would suffer, be rejected, and die on a cross. All the things that he had to go through in the process of dying for man, the scourging, the humiliation, the shame, all of those things. Now Jesus tells them that they must do the same thing. They must do the same thing. Who, who is convicted to follow after Jesus in the same manner as Jesus Christ? Deny himself. He must deny himself and take up the cross. Christ wants his followers to deny themselves and to take up the cross. See, everyone knew that what, what Jesus meant. The disciples knew what he meant when he said deny himself and take up the cross. Because everyone knew that the cross was an unrelenting instrument of death. You could see people hanging from the distance on the cross, those who had taken up their cross and were nailed to the cross. The cross had no other purpose other than to serve for death. Real converts will suffer. They will suffer loss, hardship, privation, insults, and martyrdom for Christ and his kingdom. If we will follow Christ for the rest of our lives, we will see Christ coming in all of his glory. But God wants real commitment, real commitment. And take up his cross. Take up his cross. The cross wasn't about religious ceremonies. It wasn't about traditions and spiritual feelings. The cross was a way to execute people. It was that harsh. In these 2,000 years, in these uh, 20 centuries after Jesus Christ, we have done a pretty good job of sanitizing and ritualizing the cross. We've made it respectable and acceptable. Yet Jesus said something much like this, walk down death row and follow me. I want you to walk down death row and follow me. You hear of prisoners, walking down death row all the time. Which one of us here would follow a prisoner on death row? Yeah, this is what Christ is asking. Take up your cross. It wasn't a journey. It wasn't a fun trip where you could, you know, return home and relate your wonderful experience. It was a one way trip with no return ticket. It was never meant to be a round trip. Cross-bearing does not refer to some irritation in life. Rather, it, it involves the way of the cross, meaning that there is an art to it. And the, the art of the cross and the way of the cross is in following Christ, following after him. See, the picture is 
of a man already condemned required to carry his cross on the way to the place of his execution. As Jesus himself was required to do. That's the call. Every Christian must be a Crucian, as Luther said. A Crucian being a, a fish, uh, a orange greenish fish that swims in uh, still or slow moving water. Every Christian must be a Crucian and do somewhat more than those monks that made themselves wooden <laughs> crosses and carried them on their backs continually, making all the world laugh at them. Are you a true follower of Christ? Are you a true fish? Are you a Crucian? Or are you simply carrying a wooden cross on your back for all the world to see? Going through the motions, but not really being affected by the cross, not truly following Christ. See, real commitment means being devoted to the cause of Christ and persevering through the trials. Persevering through the trials until you reach the end. Until, like Paul, you can say, I. I Fought a good fight. I have finished the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up a crown of righteousness for me. And not for someone else, but for me. If we will follow Christ for the rest of our lives, we will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds in all of his glory. In all of his glory. And finally, God wants real Christians, real Christians, and follow me, follow me. Deny himself and take up his cross. See, Jesus made uh, deny himself equal with take up his cross. The two express the same idea to deny yourself and to take up the cross are synonymous. They are basically equal. The cross wasn't about self-promotion or self-affirmation. The person carrying the cross knew that they could not save themselves. They couldn't save themselves. Denying self is not the same as self-denial. We practice self-denial when we give up something for our good. We will occasionally put away an activity. We'll give up a certain food, you know. So, so you know, we, we're, we're denying ourselves certain things. But denying self <coughs> means, <coughs> for the Christian, Submitting ourselves to Christ. Submitting our self, our will to his will, to follow him all the way. That is when we begin to live a life that is a life for Christ. When we, when we are willing to submit our will to his will. And that's the thing, we don't always want to do that because we want to do our own thing, do things our own way. And if we could hear the voice of God speaking to us clearly, like a bell ringing, it's a child, I want you to, to, to go this way. I want you to, to turn right instead of left. Uh, you may well say, well, but the left way is shorter. You know, and I always go that way. And when you hear that voice, you may just ignore it because you think you know best. You think you know best. You think you know best. 
But in that instance, you could not have foreseen what would occur um, if you continued that way. God knows. This is why God wants us to follow him, to submit our will to his will. And then he will open up the windows of heaven for us. Is following Jesus is at its simplest when we see that Christ carried a cross, carried his cross, and walked down death's road. That's following Christ at its simplest. So Christ is asking us also to follow him in that, that same way. Human nature wants to indulge self, wants to, uh, and not to deny self. Death to self is always terrible. It, 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 it's really painful when you really want to do something, but you know that God doesn't want you to do this thing. It's bad for your health. And for you to submit to God's will is painful. I'm not saying that it's not painful. It is. And if we expect it to be a, a pleasant or, or a mild experience, well, I don't want you to be disillusioned. You know, the Bible says, for those who are disciplined, that, that the experience is painful. For those who are undergoing discipline, it's painful. But it brings forth a harvest of righteousness and peace. You know, some, some of you may have been disciplined by your parents when you were young. And at the time, you didn't appreciate the discipline. You, you may have looked at your mom or your dad in a certain way, man. It's like, man, you beat me, you know, you deprived me. I don't like you. I hate you. You know, <laughs> you know. And um, but as you grow older, you recognize that the discipline has taught you something. It's taught you to be respectful, it's taught you manners. It's taught you to know that there are consequences in life, that there are consequences for your actions, that you reap what you sow. And when you do not learn these lessons, you become a menace to society. Think that you can do what you want, that there are no consequences. And then you become a criminal in society. When you don't have discipline, when you don't have guidance, when you don't have loving parents, loving guardians to guide you. Christ is calling us to self-deny, to be disciplined, to follow him all the way till the end, because it's in the end that we will see the reward. That everything that we have gone through in following Christ has been worth it. Death to self is the radical command of Christ to all Christians. This is part of Christian life. Death to self. Why must self die? Self must die in order to allow the new life of Christ to be reborn and to live in us and through us. God wants to restore his image, his character in man. The character of man is fallen, is subject to death, meaning we must die, but Christ took the death that we should die and given us his life in order for us to live. And when we accept him, and live, allow his life to be lived through us. 
and we will be new creatures in Christ Jesus. Self must die in order for a new life to begin in us. And that life is no longer subject to death, but it is an eternal and immortal life. An immortal life. To take up your cross meant one thing that you were going to certain death and your only hope was in the resurrection. The resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the thing, when a seed is planted, it dies in order to become something else. And that's what Christ wants to do for each one of us here today. Real Christians surrender everything to Christ, even their very lives. Even their very lives. If we will follow Christ for the rest of our lives, we will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds in all of his glory. In all of his glory. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he comes, the scriptures say that we will be like him. And as we prepare, not only for the coming of Christ, but for this communion, this memorial, this remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants us to be real. He wants real disciples. God wants real followers. He wants real conversion. He wants real commitment. And he wants us to be real Christians. to be crucians, to be fishes, and to become fishes of men. This is the call for us today. And as we contemplate these words, the call for Christ to be lived in us, and the challenge of the cross, examine yourselves. Examine your heart and mind. Take a little time, a few moments to reflect. Am I truly a follower of Christ? Confess your sins. Confess your faults. Quietly to yourself. As you commune with God. As we prepare for communion. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.